No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, we have a man, a very high man. Pretty high. Yola. What's up? Dope as Yola? Dope as Yola. What, what do you prefer to be called? <clears throat> like, if I, I were going to be talking about you, and I'm your friend. Every, I always say Thomas to everybody I meet. Man, that shit gay. I don't want to call you Thomas. <laughs> Fuck out of here. What I are you, a train? Shit. I mean... <laughs> It's not that bad. <laughs> Smoke train. Oh, man. No, I like if you're going to have cool Everyone always YouTuber says homies. Everyone and always cool, says Yola. Yeah. Okay. If I'm going to have cool YouTuber homies and rapper homies and shit, I always hate that. It's like you'll be friends with someone like Young Thug and then like people would be friends with them and they'll be like, oh, oh you mean Jeff? It's like, motherfucker, I didn't like become friends with Young Thug to go around <laughs> and call him Jeff. I guess I get that. I went to I high was, school with people named Jeff. I always felt weird about it. Like, walk, because when I started, everybody was like, when Instagram started, it's like, I'm fucking Stoner Girl 8653. I'm like, oh, fuck you, get away from me. Right. Like, I, that shit sounded corny. So I'm like, yo, I'm Thomas. That's how I always did it. But mm. now that I'm doing more, you not just brand shit, name, dude. It's Yola. Everybody calls me the same shit. And so they call you that because you were snorting Mad Yola back in the day? Or? Uh, Mac Dre. Okay. Andre and Andre, the song. Uh, it's just when I was like 15, I heard it. Mac Dre lyric, and I'm like, you know what? That shit's hard as fuck. My sister always tagged, so I suck at drawing, but I'd go with her so she didn't get fucked up. Okay. And I'd be tagging Dope as Yola, just thought it was cool. Okay. Started Instagram, picked the name, that was all it was. Okay. Yeah, not because I was doing hella lines. Was anymore. Mac Dre, when he was saying it, it meant Coke? Is rap, rock, and roll on Dope as Yola. Basically, Dope as Yola, cocaine, Dope as Dope, okay. Dope as Dope gets. Okay. That's how I interpret this And you've shit. never done Coke, though? Oh, I did so much coke. Oh. <laughs> I had to stop, man. I really the reason why I had to stop is I didn't want to like pull a Chris Farley and shit. That's just what like, you thought. Yo, he's kind of funny. Oh, he's he's popping. He's dead. Right. So I was just like fuck this. I'm done. You thought you were gonna die? You were doing so much coke. I'm not skinny, and I was doing like I don't know. If we're gonna do, we're gonna do an eight ball. That's a bad recipe. Chill. Exactly. Like you're already fat, motherfucker. Mm. I just didn't want him at my funeral. Like it's his own fault. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's the weird thing about being fucking 38 is that I've had a ton of people close to me die from drug overdoses, from, you know, getting shot, whatever. But then, like, I also know people who are dropping dead from just, like, an illness or, or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, a little older than me for the most part. You don't see a lot of people in their 30s just dying. But that shit's scary. It really makes you feel like, fuck, like, maybe I need to actually take my health serious, which I never, like, to me, being healthy, eating good or whatever throughout my life, to the extent that I did that, which is, you know, very unbalanced, would be, like, healthy as fuck for six months and then just, like, oh yeah, off the rails, eating fast food for six months, you, you know, throughout my life. Shit. But, like, I was never eating healthy because I wanted to live longer. No, that happens when you're getting older and the doctor goes, hey, man, you need to chill the fuck out. Right. That's what every... I mean, for me, at least. Well, you want to know what really fucks you up when you have a kid. And oh, then that's different. And then you're like, oh, shit. Like, I finally have a reason that I don't want to die. I know exactly what you're saying. Because before that, it's like, why, why do you not want to die? So you can smoke more weed. So you can, like, you know, make more YouTube videos. It's like, no, those, those are... Good things, you know, you have a fan base, that's good. Like, of course, you would want to keep living when you have a nice life going. But once you have a kid, then you're like, this kid's life is going to be fucked up if I just bail out because I'm eating KFC every day. Yo, this started off real deep. <laughs> this started off <laughs> I real ain't fucking deep. around. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't ready for this. You were ready for an interview. I'm like, so, like, no, elementary I'm, school, I'm how good. was that? I'm good, man. I'm good. How was elementary school? But yeah, I guess the, I was talking to Rosie the other day. I'm like, yo, when we have a kid, I got to be, like, not fat for two years first. I ain't trying to give the kid my fat-ass jeans and shit. Really? Yeah, I'm not trying to pull what I had to go through as a second grader and shit. Mm. That shit was whack as fuck. Really? You were fat as shit when you were little? Uh, what happened was I was a stick figure my whole life, and because my mom, we'll just say my mom wasn't the best, so I wasn't eating food and shit. Okay. And uh, when we got, not we came back, and my grandma was like, "Yo, whatever the fuck you want, you got." Oh. I was like, "Oh, can we get McDonald's twice today?" And I just got fat as fuck, like third grade. Okay. And that was it. I just stayed fucking big my whole life, man. But you said you were buff at one point. Oh, in high school. Yeah, in high school when I stopped. Uh, I got kicked out. I had to go to Oregon, and I used to do weightlifting like competition. I'm still really strong. I'm just fucking fat now. You still lift? Yeah, like nice. I can I can max like 250 at the most. Benching? Like, yeah, like okay. it's not like I was, but I used to do like competitions and shit. So I was drug free. I got kicked out. And had to move to Portland. You got kicked out for smoking weed? I got kicked out of my house from my mom for oh, not okay. going to school and selling shit. And, okay. And my dad lived in Portland, so I went up there and was like, "Yo, no connect." 
fuck. I guess I'll just work out. Right. I just got fucking rocked out for like eight months. That's Came tight. back and just kept selling weed, and then here we are today. Okay, but <laughs> we'll talk about all that. But this is a real question. So we have a guy, you may know him, Duno, who we have doing the podcast. My homie knows him well. So you don't know him. I've never met him. I would like to tap you guys in. I feel like you'd get along. Okay. He doesn't smoke weed like that. Uh, it's okay, He's man. He's a drunk fuck, really. I chill with fools that don't smoke weed all the time. Right. But, okay, so with Duno on his podcast, it's kind of like the fans keep donating, trying to, like, basically push us to, like, confront him about being fat. Like, they want us to make a bigger deal about it because, you know, like, even just in the last year or two, my guy AD, who does the podcast with me, he basically like used to be the biggest drinker you ever met. He goes to the doctor. The doctor tells him like your heart condition, et cetera, high blood pressure. Oh, wow. You need to stop drinking. He stopped drinking like that, like almost a year ago, six months, I forget. And then a little house phone. We also do the podcast with. He goes to the doctor. They're basically like, bro, you're getting fucking a health condition. You need to stop drinking. You need to stop doing drugs, et cetera. So it's kind of like this is happening to like multiple people that we do the podcast with. And then people are kind of acting like we're hypocritical for like not making a big deal out of him being overweight. But I'm like, bro, he's like, he's, he's in his early twenties. That is like, he's a fucking adult. If he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Right. But that logic compared to like people doing drugs and shit is kind of like, well, you know, if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. That's kind of like you just saying like, well, if my friends die, whatever. No, I'm saying like, you don't got to sit in there and fucking badger him about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, But what about like an intervention? I think it's more of like, yo. You fill a room with salad. It's so hard to fucking find clothes, right? Let's make that <laughs> not a fucking deal anymore. You think we should make we should appeal to his sense like, of yo, fashion? I, I bought you this like Louis jacket. It's an XL. Work at it. <sighs> yeah. And you're like, hey, damn, that's an incentive. We were just talking about like, yo, I had fucking F's in my mom, and then they were like, yo, pizza party, 4.0 student. The next right. Yeah. It's a little incentive, man. Yeah. The question know. is just what's gonna incentivize them. And is it is it like at what point do you really step in? Because I okay, if is your it, homie is, is this man's not gigantic. He's not that big. Dude, you're you're probably fuck? fatter than him. Thank you. Yeah. He's not a big dude, right? But what I'm saying is like, okay, you know, like that my 600 pound life shit. That's that's a whole different. If story. one of your homies gets to that point and you don't step in and like take his gushers away, bro, this is the thing with me. I call my friends out in five seconds. Do you? Bad, bad. Mm. Yeah, but yo, remember you're doing cocaine and you just fucking like had an ulcer in your stomach? Yeah, keep fucking up. I do that kind of shit, like like fucking dickhead shit, mm. but I smile finger guns at them while they do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because one of my homies had a fucking heart attack. A, no, sorry. He had a stroke, woke up all covered in blood. Three days later, he's doing lines. I'm like, yo, this is not going to be fun. Like if I have right. to talk to your mom when you're dead type shit. This is not, this is stupid. Because you know what's a bad feeling is when your homie dies and you like... Didn't knew do it was going to happen where it was like super obvious. Like if you had like people don't say it, but like, you know, it. sometimes when people are like living like a really bad lifestyle, I've definitely had people around me die and I was just like zero percent surprised. And that's oh, not a good feeling. No, I've never had. I've always talked shit. I talk. Yeah. I think. No, but even if you talk shit, it's still like if you like, like that guy you're talking about, if he fucking had another heart attack and died, it's like, how would you feel? You'd feel like, oh, no, like as soon as I'm done, this like, was going to happen. Yeah, no, as soon as I'm done, it's like more of like, yo, you need to stop. I always talk to my friends like in a real way. Like if yeah. it's a serious thing, I've had friends addicted to too, too many things. I've had a fucking homies disappear probably because they owe money. I've had really? F- yeah. I've and had, you like, don't even know what happened to him? Just one friend. Uh, he was my connect and he, um, <clears throat> Yeah, he disappeared, man, in, in Merced. And it was really sad, man. It was wow. really sad, man. He and was the, fam- very, the family doesn't know what happened, right? Uh, there's missing sign. We did all that shit, bro. I know what. I think I know what happened. Because he called me, but he was on ox. He's bad. This is another example. Oh, Jesus. I would go over there and be like, yo, let's smoke weed. Let's watch Step Brothers. Like, fuck the pills. All right. I'll chill with you all day. Like, if someone needs help, I'm, and my friend, I'm really, th- I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. But there was no stopping him. There was no, I would hit his pills once, and he fucking lost his shit. Wow. I walked into his house, door open, 150, 200 pounds, money just slumped on the couch, oh, door wow. unlocked. And I'm sitting here putting packs away like, motherfucker, bro. Holy and shit. He's a little older than me. He doesn't really chill with nobody because he's so balling, but he's on pills and he's always got a gun because he's fucked in Merced and he's white. So like you're in Merced selling that much weight and you're white, you're, a, you're, you're the minority here. He's you know? the target. For y- sure. Yeah, you're the guy. So you set him up and robbed him? Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. He right. called me one time and he just... That was a test. Yeah, he got jumped at the at a party and then the next morning he, uh, 
He called me. I'm like, don't worry for all you hella money. He lost like 80 bands. And his connect was a He had 80 man. bands on him at a party? He was selling the bag there. He's a fucking idiot is what wow. happened. He's a fucking moron. And um, This is an intervention right now. Your friends are sending this to him right now. Like, bro, he's talking about you on no jumper. He's still gone. Oh, this is the guy who went missing. Yeah, he's still gone. Bad, yeah. Nah, he's still gone, but uh, hopefully one day I yeah. get a picture from his brother. Like, yo, look who showed up. It's been like nine years, bro. Right. He's been, I think he's gone. But So, so where, where are you from again? Uh, Merced. Uh, Merced, by, okay. by Fresno. What was that like for you? I know we talked about it a little bit on the podcast, but did you have like a super hood upbringing or was it like an average California uh, I, kid upbringing? What would you no, compare it to? Merced is a uh, meth and gangs, but I don't think you did both? No, fuck no. no. I, I mean, I've done meth before because where the fuck I'm from. What age? But, uh, on accident, the first time I was 14. It's a good old time, ain't it? It wasn't fun. You know, like, I was real drunk. <laughs> and it made me get like violently sick off the alcohol and I just kept puking. I could look at it now and say like, wow. That was bad. But at the time, apparently I liked it because I kept doing it for like a day or two. Oh, you don't remember? Well, I was just fucked up with this one girl just doing hella meth and just fucking for You like could have had a days. different life. And I went and hosted a BMX contest in the middle of it. I just went, showed up, grabbed the, micro, the megaphone, hosted it for like two hours announcing all the tricks with sunglasses on, then went back to her house and kept doing meth and fucking. Were you in Merced, California? I was at Law Beach. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, no, I don't do shit like that. I do drugs and then just, <clears throat> I'm just fucked up. But I always had a sense of like, uh, so growing up in Merced, my mom's mad strict. Okay. She'll punch me in the face type shit. <clears throat> um, so when gangs happen, I was in like third grade. Some kid asked me what I bang. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. I got home. My mom like. Joe pesci me. Like, you asked mom? I asked mom. Mom, what, what do I bang? No, I asked her, like, what does that mean? Oh. Okay. And she, like, fucking strong armed me against the wall. Like, don't ever fucking talk to that kid. My mom's crazy, bro. Really? She's insane. So Not your anymore. mom was just trying to ignore the fact that you were surrounded by the street. She just wanted you to ignore it and hope that go, yeah. it would go away? Well, what I did is everybody knows Thomas sells weed and he's not a gangbanger. But so how did, do you make that help. decision? At one point, are you like, you know what? I'm not going to be like one of these tough. Fucking third sad grade. boy loco type dudes. Third Instead, grade. I'm gonna be a fucking nerd. It's third grade. Nerd is nerd fair? Yeah, I, I just did. My <laughs> mom would fuck me up. Oh, really? So I was always like trying not to get caught with packs, not trying to get caught with zit. Or I never got caught because I knew like, oh, she might stab me for real this time. <clears throat> and no shots at sad boy loco because I fuck with him. But I was just using him as an example of like, oh, a rapper. I'm, yeah, sad boy. Yeah, but if you. I'm you and I'm growing up. It's like, you know, you got to be looking at these fucking gangster rappers on TV and the music videos and shit and kind of feeling like that shit is cool, right? Never in life, bro. Never thought it was cool. Like, cool enough to do it. Nah, Respectable. Because I looked around and saw all the fools with their dads get not not picking them up, too. And I'm mm. like, yo, so who's picking you? Oh, your grandma? Okay. And I chill with them. Like, all their dads are obviously affiliated and shit. And my friends are acting like their dads. I'm like, yo... We're never leaving this fucking town if you act like that. And I just couldn't do it. But you and, always knew you wanted to get out? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, really? I always just didn't want to live there. <laughs> had you, like, gone to L.A. and shit as a kid? Like, had you seen what when bigger... I was in, like, six, six, six oh, or seven. Okay. So you kind of knew what living in a bigger city was like and you were I attracted to I just didn't want to be in Merced. Okay. Because it's just too much... It's just drugs, man. It's, everybody I know is just on fucking drugs. And so you were a little kid and you knew what a meth head was. You knew what all this shit looked like. I was still on meth at the time. Oh, in your mom. Oh, yeah, so like my dad just got off crank when I was like 17, 16. So drugs are very like present in my upbringing, you know? Okay. But they always hid that shit from me. So it's not like, <coughs> well, like I remember I said my mom wasn't the best. So there was times like <coughs> she chained the refrigerator because she was tweaking and was like, you guys can't eat until we eat. And that's when I was like a stick figure, like all CPS kid and shit. Mm. So like, that's when I came back and got fat as fuck. I think my body was like some trauma. I'm like, nah, nah, save everything you eat, motherfucker, because yeah. we don't know what's happening tomorrow type okay. thing. But, yeah, that, that growing up in Merced, it was it's just gangs, man. It's just right. gangs and shit. But I know hella gang mayors. I know them all, and they know me. Right. And they know I got fucking fire, and I don't bang anything. So <laughs> right. that's, it was very so, easy for me. But you never, had, you never felt, like, pressured? Fuck no. Okay. Hell, cool. My dad was trying to be a little Norteño when I was about eight. He came to my party completely flamed out, shaved head, just the top bang slick back. And I remember looking at him like, you look like a jerk. Like, <laughs> you told him that? No, in my head. I'm oh, like, okay. but I remember he was on one. What's flamed out? Completely red, dripped all the oh, way down. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's what like, they wear, right? Yeah. 
non all the way up and down. Wow. And um, I remember he came to my party, he got me a BMX, my first off, he showed up, oh my God. Oh. And he got me something. And then he fucking was tweaking and like threw my bike and fucked it up and what? Cause he was trying to do a trick. <laughs> He's a grown ass man. I just remember a man in, in red jeans. I'm like, why is my dad wearing red jeans? And then some shit happened. He stopped trying to be a gangbanger. It was like a phase for him. Wow. Yeah, my dad's a real nice dude like me. So I, it was always a weird phase. He was dating some gangster ass girls. It I was. mean, it's weird. You know, as humans, we go through phases. But as a kid, you want your parents to have their identity like very established. Well, and if you see your parents dipping and dabbling. He was like 22 at the time. Oh, 23. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my dad had me at like 17, 18. My mom was like 17. Mm. My, my dad was 19. Okay. So they were fairly young when I was like four. So you thought drugs were bad news up until... Because the D.A.R.E. program, they actually mm. did do a good job. But up until what dad. point did you realize like, oh, actually, no, I'm going to start... Fucking. And were you smoking weed from a super young age? No, uh, 13. The day before... You know, remember the... the you, know, you, don't, you don't fuck with sports, but when the Raiders played the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl... The night before that, I got high for my first time. Okay. I watched Mad TV. I drank Tampico juice. Oh, so that's why you like his jacket. Shit. Yeah, I, watched, I fucking watched Mad TV. Oh, it was Harry Spear. Newman. What's going on? It was sick, man. Like, it was the first time I smoked Mountain Dew can. I was that's a four, how you did it? Yeah, 4.0 student, though. <laughs> nice. So I was like, iffy. I'm like, is this going to fuck me up? And, and, how, I, and you got really high. Oh, kind of. And you loved it. I just remember I loved the feeling of and not And you were like, I'm going to base my life on this. <laughs> that happened at like 22, 23. Okay. I was just selling packs and shit until I started Instagram, and then I started slowing down selling because obviously I'm going to get my door kicked in for showing that much weed. Okay. So I figure if I sell, show 30 pack, who cares? I'm not selling it. Kick my door in. But did you ever have legal problems? Yeah. Yeah, I got like some DEA bullshit, and they wasted their fucking time on me. Why? What did they what They thought I was shipping for? mushrooms. Oh. And you weren't? Fuck no. I don't ship shit. Oh. I don't ship nothing. I, I sell. I used to sell weed to people I knew and I saw. Okay. And I can see in person and like you know this fool from where? Okay, cool. Because it was always just like me getting in trouble. Like how long are you people following me? Mm. And my friends above me are not going to be too fucking happy when they kick their fucking door in for my text messages or my calls or. It was just not. You, you were know. getting your phone searched and shit like that. Well, fucking the, the DEA. They started this little investigation on me, thought I was shipping mushrooms, because I was posting at the time, like 10 pound bags of mushrooms, because <laughs> I was buying a lot of mushrooms and eat, I was eating them. Right. I was eating the fuck out. I wasn't even selling them. Really? It was long enough ago that I, I can lie and be like, no, nah, so. But so I really wasn't. You were geeked the fuck up. I was just taking a lot of mushrooms. That yeah. shit turns people weird real quick, don't you think? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you could smoke yeah. weed every day and remain somewhat normal. Even though, for sure, I've seen people, like, have their personality, like, fundamentally changed by weed, too, like, in bad ways. Yeah? Yeah, you know, I wouldn't say it's the, the usual occurrence, but I've definitely seen people turn into strange people through uh, weed. I've seen a lot of people do, off the acid. They take acid too much. Oh, yeah, for sure. You don't I think, think mushroom has, like, a similar effect at some point? Yeah, I don't take... I would not take it every day. It was, like, every three days oh, for, okay. like, a month and a half straight. I was... I ate a lot of them at the same. Like I smoked weed, I ate a lot of shrooms at once. But know? maybe I'm just old school. Maybe I just think that about mushrooms because you know you fuck with you them. I have throughout my life a bit, but I definitely haven't done it with any kind of regularity. I did a Sada Baby podcast where we ate mushrooms, and we had like a super weird like conversation that you would never fucking have unless you were on mushrooms. So that was that kind of made me a little bit of a believer. But we really didn't eat much at all. How much you eat? I don't know, a small amount of the chocolate or some shit. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, when I eat them, I go hard. I take like a quarter and is, I sit is in my Is chocolate room. not valid? You gotta Fuck, eat. they work well. Okay. Oh, man, they're awesome. But the chocolate bars aren't more than four grams, I'm saying. So if you ate the whole thing, you'd be tripping. But I also I had a couple different nights in my life. Like, I remember one night in Long Beach with this girl that I was seeing at the time, and we ate a fuckload of mushrooms, and it wasn't doing anything, so we ate a fuckload more. And then it all just hit me like a fucking brick wall. I feel like I've heard everybody in the world tell the story. But, yeah, we got so fucked up. And at that time, we were really, really into scaring each other. So basically, like... You know, like if I was still into scaring, like I would, I would like you know, s like crouch down by that door over there, and then when Josh walks in, I would jump out. Yeah, I've gone through those phases. Too. We would do that. <laughs> we would do that all the time, and we were all we were just coming up with mad, different, like creative ass ways to scare each other and shit. And I remember one of the homies 
we went to fucking uh, Jack in the Box around the corner, got some food. I'm coming back with the girl. I'm walking up and I see this fucking kid like crouched down in the bush and he lets me walk by, spares me, doesn't scare me. But then when the girl who I'm fucking walks up, he jumps out. Did she shit her pants? She looked like she was going to have a seizure. Like she was. Yeah, on uh, mushrooms, like, everything's more intense. Bro. That was fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah, that's not fair. Bro. That's not cool. If that chick worked for some like feminist blog and had like an article about like this is what they did to me while I was on mushrooms, it would be like well, she would be one hundred percent the right because that shit was fucked up. Like you should not do that to somebody when they're on mushrooms. No, the most shit I ever do on mushrooms is like do coke and shit when I was younger. Oh, that's a wild combo. It is pointless. Yeah, it's pointless. But, so do you actually like decide I'm going to stop doing coke and all this other shit at yeah. some point? Yo, do you do none or do you I don't do, any do very all. little in terms of like other drugs? No, I do mushrooms. I smoke a lot of weed. I drink sometimes. That's it. Okay. I don't do drugs anymore. I just don't want to. F- I got too much to do, man. Yeah. I got, I'm just too busy to take five hours of my fucking day to get fucked up. Right. Yeah. And then after I'm going to feel shitty and go, nah, tomorrow I'll do everything. That's how I feel. Cause I bought a pint of lean like fucking a year ago or like six months ago and shit. And I've like drank some a couple of times. But generally speaking, it's like, it's going to make me really tired, and then I'm going to fall asleep, and I'm probably going to sleep longer than I normally would sleep because of the lane. And, like, I have a kid that wants to wake me up at, like, 5.30 in the morning, so it's just, it never feels like a good time to drink Mm -hmm. some lean. Whereas when I was younger, for sure, if I had some lean, I would be drinking that fucking lean really fast, you know? What the fuck else am I doing? Uh, The last time I did coke, I got a super bad sinus infection from it. My friend brought over something nasty, I guess. I got a bad sinus infection. I was spinning for like days. I had a crazy bacteria growing inside of my fucking nostril or whatever it was. I had to go to the doctor. Anyway, my dad just had surgery and he's like, yeah, I got this uh, bottle of uh, painkiller. I'll bring it to you. I'm like, I don't give a fuck, bring it. He's like, drink about a third of the bottle, maybe (laughs) half. And then go to sleep. Uh-huh. So I drink this bottle. I don't, I'm just I fucked up. I drink this bottle. I drink it down to about here. And I wake up a couple hours later, the hottest I've ever been. And I just start throwing up this, like, you ever seen Fern Gully? It's the been old a while. cartoon. Remember the black slime? I start throwing up the black fucking oh, slime. Yeah. Really? And then my nose starts bleeding. It was from lean? The pressure. I'm, I'm done. As I'm done, like, throwing up all over my house, trying to make it outside, I'm by myself. Uh-huh. My fucking girlfriend's just not there at the time. I fucking read this bottle and it says promethazine with codeine on it. Uh-huh. And I call my dad. I'm like, dad, you know what the fuck you just gave me? He goes, yeah, it's a fucking painkiller. My dad, I drank half a bottle. It says like to pour a small amount. It said the directions on the bottle. I'd never tried lean. I never, it's Merced. No one's got money for that shit. Right. I never even saw it in my life. And that's the only time I ever drank lean. And it was horrible, bro. Wow. I, I never heard of so anybody much. having that kind of reaction to it. I threw up so hot and like water, slime, <sighs> black. I just remember I just threw up on the ground and went, fuck, I got to clean it. Wow. And I ran out the house throwing up a little bit all the way out. (laughs) My first time doing lean, though, was kind of like that, too, though, where, like, we had no idea what we were doing, so we poured up way too much, drank it way too fast, and then we were just fucking passed out by, like, 3 p.m. We, like, didn't even make it out the house. We were planning on, like, going out and doing something. We all died. We all woke up at, like, 11 p.m. The downers, man, they're not for me anymore. Yeah. I mean, I just don't, I don't know. I never, I fuck with pills in high school and shit. I used I love ecstasy. If they had an ecstasy that was like, yo, don't worry, you won't die off this shit. Your heart's fine. I'll, I'll take that shit. You miss right it? it what, do you do, what, do you, what do you do on ecstasy? I would just go to parties and sell weed. You just be doing shit. Just do stuff fucked up. Many times in my life I've done ecstasy and just basically been like paralyzed with like good feelings slash wanting to fuck. Like, in my life, I've definitely, like, if any time I ever did ecstasy, I was either with a girl who I, would, like, made sure was going to be there to fuck. Like, you know, that's why we were doing yeah. ecstasy. Or I was, like, in my phone hitting up every girl I knew and trying to get someone to hang out with me. Oh, man. Because that shit just made me, like, fucking demon time. <laughs> I just fucking melted wherever I was at and just slumped. <laughs> just felt like water everywhere. I love that. You ever fuck with mescaline? No, not specifically. Took a lot of mescaline when I was like 19, 20 for like a year. How was that? So fun. <laughs> Everything is just like, oh, my jaw feels like it's got to move, and then I'm just a puddle. <laughs> that is a f- good feeling. Disclaimer, kids, 
we both don't do drugs don't now do drugs because no this shit is very, very bad for you in the long run, even though it's insanely fun that's, during it. <laughs> yeah. At that's times. pretty much it. Exactly what he said. Don't do drugs. But there's always a come down, even when you're doing it. There's always just... Everything you, has you, it. You pay a price the next day with everything. Coke was the worst because I drink so much. Oh, when I used to do lines, that oh, I just God. wake up fucked up. I don't even honestly really know what it would be like to do Coke and not drink. Yeah. Exactly. Like I've, every time I've ever done coke back it in the day, it was always Keystone Light. <laughs> really? Wow. Bro, because we were all kids, man. We all had no money. Right. We were selling weed just so we could buy more weed to smoke, and then buy some coke, and shit's expensive. I remember when I first bought coke. I uh, I had this girl that wanted to kick it with me. This fucking tattoo model girl, probably the type of chick you would fuck with, and uh, she was like fucking these huge fake boobs and like tons of tattoos and shit. And she like, I remember she was on the cover of some fucking magazines and shit in that weird ass fucking tattoo world. And she wanted to hang out and do coke. And I knew this dude down the street who sold coke. So I go get some fucking coke from him and I'm buying it on like a Saturday night to hang out with her on Sunday and do it. And he realizes when I'm buying it that I'm not going to do it that night, that I'm saving it for the next day. And he just told me, he's like, just so you know, you're definitely the only person I'm selling coke to tonight or like any other night that's gonna save it for the next night. He's like, that's he's like everybody I sell coke to is doing it right yeah, now. That's kind of unheard of. I'm like, wow. I'm like fucking because I was I'm about to do it for the first time. Oh, that was the first time you did it or first time you bought it? First time I did it. I was probably first time you did it, you bought 25, it. Twenty five, twenty six oh, or something. Good for you. That's fucking awesome. I made it a while. Ago. I love seeing that shit, dude. <laughs> I do, man. I was doing drugs way too fucking early. How old are you now? I'm 32. You're old. Yeah. Is that you, how you feel? No. <laughs> you don't feel old? <laughs> Every time someone asks me, I go, 20, what? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I feel kind of old at 38. Oh, uh, no, I don't feel old at all. I feel old as fuck. Fuck. I have no. a kid. I like made it to like a stage of oldness that I never thought I would get to. Hold on. The day you start rocking the new balances and the high pants, then you're a dad and you're old. Yeah. That's when so you when you stop it. paying attention to your clothes is when no, you're old? the day you turn into the man that Morse that always wears the New Balances, the white ones that are laced real tight, yeah. that's when you're old. Because okay. I always wonder, like, when you're when you're a kid, you're watching Hook, and you're sitting like where Robin Williams, like, damn, he's a fucking old man. He's like 40 years old, got a house, a career, he's answering the phone. Okay, but in my book, when, you, when <laughs> you you're old, in rap culture, when you're old is when you never leave the house wearing anything besides your own merch. So, no offense, but you've kind of already, you kind of hit I've that one. I've been doing the Homer Simpson shit for a long time. <laughs> what? Just wearing, wearing the same, same exact shit thing? all the time, man. I, 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 but I noticed that when I look at rappers is that once they hit that point where they're just wearing their own merch <laughs> That's a only, good way to put it. is that that is like a very significant career milestone, except in the battle rap community where they just, they, only, they all only wear their own merch. It's like a rule in battle rap. You can't wear anything besides your own merch. I had my phase of watching every fucking battle rap that's ever been on, t on YouTube for months. Really? I don't know what it is about that shit. It's like a comedy show that rhymes. Mm. I love that shit, man. It is fun. It is fun. But it's also very taxing in large amounts. But like I went to my first battle recently. I've never been. And it was wild. I was standing up for like eight hours watching motherfuckers make punchlines at each other on stage. Eight hours? Oh, no. And we were going like sitting down for an hour, half hour, whatever. And like, but it was a taxing experience for sure. But I respect the fuck out of the people who were just eagerly standing there the whole fucking time, hanging on every word. When's the last time you went to a music festival as a regular ass person, not going in the back, not having the pass, <sighs> not going, hey, the artist invited me? When's the last time, and you remember how long you used to stand for it's, that shit? Yeah, I know, right? It's Days, it felt like. Oh, my God. It's, it's weird insane. to think, like, would you go to a show now? Like, I wouldn't do it if you paid me. I wouldn't stand for eight hours in the fucking crowd. What? Yeah, but I, it's I don't crazy. Know. I went to see Drake at Staples Center, and that was cool. Just a couple years ago. It's fun being in the crowds at rock shows only. I don't really like the rap show crowd. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, Drake has such a mainstream audience that I felt totally comfortable in the crowd, you know? Where I was like, you know, I can't go to like a rap rap show and be in the crowd. That's like going to be way too hectic. Yeah, it gets hectic as fuck. I used to go to a lot of shows in Santa Cruz. But I went to like Coachella a couple of years ago too. I've never been to something like that. I went to Rock the Bells. It was weird. It was just, was it? That's just too white for me. Like, I don't know any of the fucking, band. I don't know any of the people playing. Do they have wine stations? You can buy wine. They have all kinds of whatever fucking alcohol you want to waste your money on. They'll What's definitely that? sell you fifteen dollar drinks. You're saying it's for just sure. too white for me. I'm like, uh, if there's a wine part, it, it, then yeah. I, I think like very few times in my life have I felt or thought in my head, this is too white for me. 
Because I mean, I, I I used to like LARP when I was twelve. Wait, what's that? Isn't that like you role make playing? swords and you go like beat each other up in the park? Fuck and yeah. I'm just saying that that at that time I didn't feel like this is too white for me. But at Coachella, I kind of felt like, you know, like I just like really was like fuck, like I need to go to like Rolling Loud. I, I can't to, be I, here. I, I got to cancel this. Out I need right to now. be at Summer Jam. No, like, I, this is I, just not my tribe. Here. I get you, man. You know, my other side of my family's all white Jewish people. Right. So there'll be times I'm sitting there going, these are my blood relatives. This but is fucking You're insane. Jewish and Mexican? Yeah. My, my other side of the family is, uh, they're like Polish and, I don't know, my grandma Dolores, she, my whole side of the family is from Massachusetts. Oh, I've never met them before. That's like directly adjacent to Cherry where I'm from. Cherry Hill, Cherry Stone, something rich as shit. I don't <laughs> know. But I know they're all balling. I never met them because they got shunned. They married like... My grandpa in the 30s, but he was a Catholic white they dude. They got shunned. They got shunned and got cut off. Like, he's Catholic? Get the fuck out the family. So that's why you're not getting any of this Jew money? That's pretty much it. I never <laughs> even met him, man. My grandma never even met him. Well, then it seems fair that you're it's, not getting other money then. Yeah, I don't give a shit. I just oh. think it's crazy. Like, there's my counterpart out there in Massachusetts somewhere. Well, you should not give them any oh, of no, your YouTube I, I don't, riches. I don't know them. I don't know. Them. I think it'd be kind of cool to know them, though. Bro, I went back on your YouTube. I did the thing on YouTube where you fucking click, like, oldest videos. Bro, your oldest videos, it's pretty much just, like, GoPro footage, no audio, no talking of you just smoking, admittedly, like, pretty insane amounts of weed. Yeah. That's all. What it was, it was iPhone before Instagram had video. That was the iPhone? No, it was my iPhone. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was I didn't film on a camera until 2018. Really? I was just all iPhone, and what it was, I used to film clips, because Instagram didn't have video yet. Uh, so I would just be like, yeah, one day when Instagram has video, fuck it, I'll get my YouTube clip. So that's why a lot of it has no audio, and it's just stuff. Right. Like, the old shit was just me going, I don't know what YouTube, what's my password? <laughs> fuck, I post like every eight months. I didn't give a fuck. And you weren't getting any traction back then, I'm assuming? Or were those mm -hmm. videos getting any views? Uh, some of them had like 800... Just because back then, like, you could probably, like, search any old weed term on YouTube and, and like, people up. were, like, trying to figure out some weed shit on YouTube. Yeah, yeah no, now, when I, like, my, uh, my biggest videos I've ever had on the channel now are all tutorials. Like, how to roll a bag, how to roll a joint, how to fucking cross joint. Right. All that stuff because... I remember that era when, like, everybody had to make their own how to roll a backwood video. Really? I felt like that was kind of a thing. For, and, and literally, Hot New Hip Hop had a series... It was all rappers teaching you how to roll it backward, and they did like fifty of them. Really? Yeah, and I, I just remember I knew mad rappers that like for some reason would just have a clip of them like rolling it backward and talking about it back then. Have you ever seen ours? It's very, no. very fucking awesome and detailed, and it's the number one on YouTube. Really? Yeah. I need to watch that. Though. Yeah, it's it's uh, I think what it is, I had like thirty pack just in the back, and I didn't even mention it. <laughs> so I think people were like, "Yo, what the fuck is?" Ba oh shit. I said, I think it was a lot of attraction. People go, what is that? So it like hit an algorithm or something. Right. But yeah, it, um, I don't smoke backwards at all. Okay. I just did it because I know my fans do. You never did? I used to smoke Swishers at like 14 to 19, 20, and I just smoked joints 21 and up. Right. I just don't like tobacco, man. You really hate it. I don't fuck with it, man. You never smoke a cigarette? I smoked packs for years. Hi, Gina. Yeah, I smoked packs for a long time. You did? Yeah, I used to smoke uh, non-filter, camel non-filters. You ever gone to the doctor and talked about your lungs? Yeah, I've done lung tests. I'm good. You're good? Yeah, they were like, oh, no, you're fine. I go, but sometimes I'm like... And then I figured I, it was uh, just the pollen from certain strains of packs. Might be dumping hella packs out. Mm -hmm. I realized, like, is that why my fucking chest feels like that? It wasn't like me getting sick. Because I've been to the doctor. Like, yeah, you have very strong lungs. Right. Like, I fucking know I do. You seem like you were, like, <laughs> born into, like, the weed community. Like, it was never an option that you weren't going to be a weed guy. I mean, in my town, that's all I was. <laughs> that's what I was I'm saying. Guy selling weed forever, but there's a lot man. of towns like that yeah. in, in California. Well, what it was, man, is uh, I was, remember when Instagram first started, the Explore page. Yeah. All the most popular. It was me with pounds. <laughs> just like this nice kid right. with 30 packs just holding them before rappers started holding stacks of money like this. Right. I would do the pounds. I started like doing all that shit, and it would get on the Explore page. Right. So I'd have all these fucking celebrities going who the fuck is this kid and it's before i got started getting deleted i had a huge following how long know? did you go before you started getting deleted i went for like four years oh wow yeah instagram's so fucked years. up yeah man you're on 25 accounts this is the 26th or 5th or some okay. shit yeah and you don't have much faith you pretty are pretty I'm sure i'm about to hit 100 again 
But so you're pretty sure it's going away eventually, or eventually they're gonna fuck with me. Do you just not post anything even close to weed? I don't post nugs. I don't tag companies. I don't tag my own legal companies because they've deleted me for that. Wow. Do your brands get deleted as well? Fuck yeah. My just clothing company. The day they said you're apply, you're uh, approved for verification, they deleted me. Wow. My clothing company. And you can't just, get just you, clothes. You can't get through to Instagram to talk about this at all. Oh, I've talked to talked to them many times. They just politely like. Eat a dick. Just get the fuck out. <laughs> Eat a dick. I went to Frisco. I went to the headquarters and everything. You went there. Fuck yeah. What I was doing, I was uh, driving some packs to my friend. Uh, I was, so no, it was no, convenient. Dro- yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking go to the headquarters. And I right. did. And they were like, yo, fuck off. Yeah. That was it. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, if I had them, it'd be like almost $4 million on Instagram. That's, That's fucking crazy. sad, man. Terrible. I don't, I don't give a shit. Cause I'll just keep doing other stuff. You just have to fucking focus on other things. Yeah, at that's a certain why, point. Yeah, that's why the podcast is, is 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 helps me a lot. Just because, right? It's another outlet of like we've done epi- five episodes, six episodes in a row, no smoking. Oh, really? So YouTube's like, oh, that's what we want, motherfucker. But it's like my episode demonetized because no, no somehow no. I don't know. We don't how. get demonetized that often for it. Desto Dub pouring up lean on the podcast got uh, demonetized the other day though. I, I could see that though. Yeah, no, uh, just sometimes what we talk about, just the topics we talk about, we get flagged for it. But it's so hit or miss. I will do a podcast talking about the most fucked up shit sometimes, just all nonstop poop jokes, terrible shit, racial jokes, all the shit that you would think that YouTube would be like, no, and it'll just boom, it's monetized. What it is. I talk about shit that they don't want. Like I'm like, yo, guys, for everyone shipping packs, give me five minutes of your time. Let me not make you not go to jail. This is what you're going to need to do. And I'll just talk about it because it just popped up in my head. Right. But that might help someone's fucking life. <coughs> but YouTube was like, hey, man, don't be fucking doing that shit. I always thought about this back in the day because at the time I was actually doing this. Film yourself packaging the weed and shipping it. And then film receiving it on the other end that's fucking insane and make a youtube video about it but i was like bro if you do that you need to also like have the clean like you can't have anything dirty and in your life at all because you're making yourself such a target on. yeah and you would probably basically <laughs> Be a new yeah. channel off a phone you bought off the street but like because i've just i've seen people do it i did it a little bit back in the day like just the process of watching somebody package it and how to, ship it how is how crazy as fuck is on the youtube my, my videos on there right Oh, yeah, but you I didn't did. film yourself walking to the post office. Fuck no, no. I'm saying like that is something that people need to know. In the beginning of YouTube, though, I my kind of like main thing was like, oh, I'm gonna do crazy shit. I'm like, I <gasps> I did an acid trip vlog. That's I cool. did threesome vlogs where I would like you know be pull up to the the house and talking to the girls afterwards talk about it and shit like that uh, okay. I was like, you know they i let I, you post the three yeah well we didn't show any <laughs> yeah, sexual stuff. Saying, but you know yeah. like that like <laughs> early on that was kind of like my thing to a certain extent went viral a few times pushing with that it. kind of shit but then you know obviously over the years youtube has become a lot yeah you're just pushing it without showing it a lot less hospitable yeah no that's exactly what's going on everything's getting fucked with but the idea you talked about i have that i was telling you about that brand the hac brand right so i had the idea of Packing it all up, <coughs> walking into the post office and filming the post office work. I'm like, what's in here? Uh, hash and edibles and pens. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, no, it's all illegal. Don't worry. And hand it to him. <coughs> and I was thinking, like, do you think a GoPro could last in an overnight fucking box? Right. And just have the GoPro going so when the person opened it. But this is legal. So it's not as like, mm. oh, this will ship to pack and fucking right. filmed it. But then again, who wants to go to prison? Let me ask you this. Hypothetically, when you're shipping pounds of weed in the mail, what percentage of them are getting confiscated? This is a good topic. I want everybody to hear this. Yeah. For everyone out there going, my shit always lands. It fucking lands. Every time. Never had one go. I guarantee seven out of ten got looked at. When I let it go. Because they're just building a case. Like, I want 20 going to this fucking address. I want them to pick up 20 fucking times. And then I'm going to come at them and go, I have you shipping weed 20 fucking times across state lines. Instead of just the one. And now it's more, it's easier to go. So who are you sending more shit to? Really? Fuck yeah. So you've seen this happen over and over and over where they just build big ass cases? Of course. Okay. A lot of people don't think about it. Like, oh, my shit always lands. Like, you think it did. It landed twice. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to get them push trees. My, my clothing company mm-hmm. ripped open all the time. It'd come in another package. It was the DEA bullshit when they thought it was shipping shrooms. Okay. So they're cutting open all my clothes. 
thinking I was shipping in my clothes. Right. So they spent like six months ripping open my packages. Search it was searched and uh, it has little notes in there, uh-huh. or it'll be in another bag. Right. But yeah, the DEA. No, for everyone out there that thinks they're getting away, you're probably not. But how are they finding it? Just like X-raying the shit, or they have dogs sniffing my, it out? Uh, yeah. You'd be believe it or not, some people just don't do a good job. Right. That's what I it is. They that. fucked up. Uh, my best homie used to work at a postal place. Right. People used to send like little quarter bricks through there, just in a shirt, mm. in a box. Uh, my my friend had a he found a pack of purple. It was just in a box, double bagged. Right. That's it. People really do shit like that and think it's gonna get through. And I mean, weed is about the strongest smelling fucking thing on earth. Like you ever like get your luggage and just be like, oh fuck. fuck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like holy shit. All the time. Every time I go to the airport, <laughs> I make sure to go, all right, dump the whole bag. Make sure I don't have any bags in here from last time. Or you realize how bad it is when uh you know you'll you'll be like <laughs> you'll you'll be I'll be out of the car for like a half hour. And like we were smoking blunts in the car, but we'll be out of the car for like a good amount of time. And then I'll get in the elevator and like some old guy will be like, it smells good here today. That's and the national. Hey, I smoke too. Yeah. It smells good. In Whenever here. I walked up, up to the poker table, they're always like, oh, somebody smells good. Ha, ha, ha. That's a pretty good impression of every person that's ever said that shit. That doesn't smoke. <laughs> every single person says it the same <laughs> fucking way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think I, I smell everywhere I go, and I just don't realize. Right. Yeah. So I'm over it. Do Do you know people that you consider senseis of shipping packs, like people who yeah. you know get yeah. those things through over and over and, and over? I can't say it. Obviously, you but know. they do have a method of. If this is searched, I'll know. It's fucking mm. incredible. That's interesting. You ever see a Demolition Man? Yeah, I don't know. Damn. Well, the reference won't work, but anyway. There's a lot of things you can do to make a box feel completely packed full. Okay. And there's no, it's hard to explain without explaining it. I'll tell okay. you after, but yeah, I have homies. I looked at them and go, wow, you can stand on the box and won't even crush. Really? Yeah. They ha- I ha- they're geniuses. Is man. the answer shipping like 10 at a time or is it shipping like one or two? I have like, ship like 50 to 100. Through, through the post office. These are do- doing industrial. Oh, loads. so they're doing like trucks and shit, right? Yeah, industrial. But no, I'm talking about like people just shipping. Just shipping packs. I have homies that I've seen their process. I'm like, yo, you're fucking G. Apply this somewhere else. But like ten at a time, or is it smarter to do it's a lot like of small packages? Under. It's always ten, 10 and under. Right. Yeah. Ten's I, like the max. The max, man. Because right. other than that, it's like, yo, this boom box you're shipping overnight. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what else is being a fucking? Why would flask? you be shipping a boom box overnight? You know what I'm saying? It's a good question for sure. Yeah. People always do. Like, oh, just do two day, motherfucker. Who cares right. if it's overnight? Yeah, that's they check the most. They do, of course. The overnights check first, right? Because if it's if it's par- they always got is it perishable? Why doesn't it have a hazard sticker on it, or why doesn't it have this on it? They just they're allowed to open. What about the fucking uh, the the private jet shit? Wasn't that what Rollo was doing? You're talking about the jet suite. I don't know, but I was just I, I mean it makes a shitload of sense. I will there's probably say, way less security in that. No, the security's strong, but it is okay. I've I got put onto that the first time I took one, mm. and I had a, a couple pounds on me just, just, just to fuck with, not to sell. But I remember I'm getting on, like, <laughs> like <laughs> laughing. Like, <laughs> like, yo, you could have brought your gun. You right. could have brought anything. Mm. They didn't even, like, give a fuck. Wow. They put it through the x ray saw and went, right. And got right on the plane. Wow. Yeah, Dan. So the, the private jet shit, if you can get the actual private jet, with your homies, I will. This is why YouTube fucks with me. Right. Just rent a private jet with your friends if you're getting a box each, and mm. just fucking you guys throw five bands a piece. Get a private jet. You gotta take your box for not even a drive, no trunk, no stopping at gas stations. You're just in mm. a fucking private jet right. selling weed the best way possible. Right. And it's worth it if you're selling a box. What's a box? A hundred. A hundred pounds. Pa- yeah. If you're if like yo pounds. five of my friends, we all got a uh, hundred each. It's worth getting a jet. Right. So easy. They're gonna go. Oh, thank you. Well, and they really don't you. search you. They, it's not that they don't search you. They search you for weapons. Uh-huh. So it's a metal detector thing. Right. So it's not. It's that's why you have a private jet. Uh huh. That's why people get them, so they can probably take bricks. Wow. That'd be the easiest way possible. You know, you ever like been tempted to get into that world of shipping other drugs or, or no, working no. with other drugs? You always just stuck to weed. No, because I always saw and I always thought it was my little brother sold meth and this motherfucker man. 
And there were so many times he was getting shot at. I'm like, yo, why the fuck are you doing this bullshit? Right. And then there was a couple times where he had to shoot people back, shoot back. And I'm like, yo, do you know what you're becoming? Like, what are you fucking doing? This is not, let's go play NBA Jam, motherfucker. What are you doing? <laughs> like, we smoke weed. You're selling meth? Let's sell some weed. And now he's just a grower. Mm. It's perfect. But no, nah, dude, meth brings evil. Coke brings people at three o'clock ready to fucking rob you. Mm. No pothead ever fucking bust through my window for a dub. Mm. You know, but for a 20 of, of meth, you might get killed. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a no winning thing. Once you start fucking with those drugs, now it's cartel shit. Now it's gang shit. Mm. Before it's just like, oh, that's a little fucking selling his little hundred pounds. That's fine. Leave him alone. He's right. a pizza guy. I used to be a pizza guy and I would sell sacks during my pizza shifts. So I'd put my scale and my weed in my, my bag. Uh -huh. and I'd walk up to my homies, sell them weed and leave. And it was the best thing ever. Wow. I keep my sign on after work because who the fuck's going to pull me over? Right. No one ever pulls a pizza guy over, ever. Right. So I did that for like three years. And I would just do it to have a check and know how you're paying rent. How are you paying for your car? Right. So I just have a little check, and it was so insignificant. I'd make double my check just selling weed. Right. So it was a very good thing I had going for a long time. Right. And then the pack started moving more, and I just stopped really fucking with the smaller sacks, and then I just stopped selling Right. So when did you actually decide to get serious about YouTube or, or like, like those, content in general? Right. Those uh, early videos seem like they were kind of like just you just fucking not around, fucking around. But like just when you it. start to see like, OK, maybe I could do something in this space. I say like 2016. So 20, like the end of 2012, almost 2013 to 16. I was just making pictures on Instagram, fucking around. And then like 16, 17, I moved here because mm -hmm. I was like, no, there's there's got to be more I can do. I got to do something else. I want to do more before I ever thought, before I ever talked on camera, actually. Uh -huh. I've never talked on camera until 2018, late 2017. I just did a story time on my phone. I was like, maybe people want to hear a story about me first time I sold weed. Uh -huh. And I just, I'm super descriptive and shit. So I think that's what got me. I watched it back and go, this isn't bad. This is all right. Uh -huh. And the first time I sold weed, I'm, I was at school. I remember what the fuck I was wearing. I remember everything. And that moment changed every my whole fucking life. And um, that's when I got serious. I went, all right, I'll start making long form content. And I started talking. People were like, this is what your voice sounds like? <laughs> like, yeah, I've been following you for five years, never heard your fucking voice. Right. And that's it, man. As soon as I started talking on camera and telling stories and shit. People were fucking with it. That's what blew my whole fucking channel up. Because did you know anybody else that was like you on YouTube at that time? Because oh, no. if you live in... Southern California, California in general or whatever, your personality type, meaning like Mexican dude who sells hella weed and like is, you know, it's a cool, cool dude, <laughs> but like, you know, has, has some good stories and shit. Yeah. Like, I know a lot of dudes who are sort of like you, yeah. but to the <laughs> average person on YouTube, I feel like they needed a guy to kind of fill that role and you, and you were there relatively early on. Yeah, so what I think it is is I'm super transparent. Mm -hmm. So every story I tell him, like, and this is where I fucked up, and this is where I went broke, and this is where I fucking got hooked on drugs. I'm super transparent because it's like, yo, if you're in that stage, I'm not anymore. So right. it's not impossible. You know, I'm, I'm, was, I was fucking poor my whole life. And now I'm not. Right. Just keep working because I did this shit for free for like nine years, and then I finally got paid. 2019, the first thing I ever did, I got paid for weed shit. Right. I was doing shit for free just the clothing company kept my fucking rent going and just... Really? So you, you were always fucked up money-wise on YouTube? I never got paid before. Wait, you just didn't try to sign up or you tried to sign I up? I got and monetized and, and they... He's seen it. Some, sometimes they'll say, two cents, three million <laughs> views. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because it's demonetized and then they just took it away completely. Oh. Yeah, I've never gotten paid. Oh, I got paid $700 one time when I, in like 2018. Mm. And that was it. Wow. Yeah, I've never gotten paid off this fucking 150, 180 million views, whatever it is. No, nothing. That's crazy. Just because on my podcast, we're smoking weed a very significant percentage of the time. It's the explicitness. And we have had issues with getting money from YouTube and stuff, but at this point, we're we're totally fine. And uh, it's just crazy that your shit would just be like viewed as being only this. It's, I'm so fucking, and one of my first story times is 
hard drug confessions since me at 14 talking about how I accidentally smoked fucking meth with this girl Jennifer. You were 14? Yeah, I was smoking weed. I was drunk as shit off gin. And I'm like, yo, let me hit that fucking pipe. So I hit the pipe and she's like, it's a cabbie. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? As I'm hitting it and I'm ripping, I'm ripping it. And as I let it out, I'm like, what is this feeling? And then she goes, there's fucking meth on it. And she's, I remember she says it all slow-mo and I just got, it was terrible. Wow. But that's one of my first stories I ever told. And I'm over here just fucking smiling, smoking a joint. Like, so I'm smoking meth right. and I'm fucking like, blah, blah. And the first time I smoked crack with my uncle by accident, I thought it was fucking weed, a Coke on my weed. I'm like, oh, I hate doing this. All right, I'll smoke it. Right. And I look at it, the bag, I'm like, this is fucking crack rocks, fool. What's wrong with you? Uh -huh. But I'm telling these stories and there's a million, two million views on it. And I think YouTube's like, no. Right. Fuck this guy. Have you tried to change your content? To so be profitable or like, you know, not say specific I have terms. another channel where I'm... The podcast channel, right? No, where I'm family friendly. It's called The uh -huh. Adventures of Yola. How well does that do? I, I hate not smoking weed and doing <laughs> camera shit. Right. So I do get paid. I got like 220 subscribers, 220,000 probably. I just don't use it. Uh, how, oh, you don't make videos I made one video on it yesterday, but that was the first one since September. I too have a dead channel. I have my, oh, I my own personal shit. channel that I like almost never upload on. But I do get paid off. I just mm. rather not get paid and make fun shit and right. make money some other way. But now I am doing more content. But after you left and you were telling me like, no, we have, we get the amount. I'm like, how can I do something so i made a video on youtube called uh youtube's restricted my content i didn't cuss didn't smoke uh -huh. and it performed like just like my other videos like twenty thousand thumbs ups in like 12 hours like it's a it, just like my old videos but it like, didn't make any money no it gives you no, no money but it didn't age restrict it didn't throw it down it okay. suggested it right but it's the first time in a year so even if i can just get the views back that i normally get I can still make money off of that in some way, even though I'm not getting paid. So has the merch always just been like the That's the thing? only thing that kept me alive for fucking five years. Really? Yeah. And does it do really well? Would you say Push it's like... Push is fucking amazing. Really? Dude, when we drop like certain drops, man, it's like a fucking supreme sellout. Wow. It'd be like eight, ten minutes, done. Sold out everything. Wow. On certain shit, like on our <laughs> bombs, on our certain grinders, on certain shirts, it shit our fan base is super strong and so do you do it like that where you you do these drops and then you can't really get it otherwise no no um well you know what yeah on certain things i like, on yo, certain like, things on but certain then, things. but we could go to the website right now and you have yeah like, i have clothes you have, yeah, I have clothes right. i have fucking bongs and grinders and trays but and you do certain drops that certain are limited, drops right, yeah. wild ass shit right yeah i'll do that and do you think your fans just like support it so much because they know that you don't get paid by YouTube, so they want to help I, you out. The comment I get a lot is, I'd rather buy this than go to the store knowing that you're getting paid. Right. Because you don't get fucking paid. Because people have seen me get deleted. Like, yo, this is your eighth account this month. Like, I know. Still going to make shit. I don't give a fuck. Because my fans, I, the reason I don't stop is because I get a little pee. I'm sure you do too. But people are like, yo, you made my fucking day today. Thank you for fucking posting. You reply whole fucking weeks, man. Like, dude. Right. As a kid, you could never imagine you could just be like, yo. Have a great day. It can make someone's whole fucking day. Right. That's why I always keep making more accounts and don't stop. And I'm glad I didn't because if I stopped when I started getting deleted, I, what the fuck would I be doing? I don't know. Earlier today, I was at the homie's funeral and uh, this young kid, <clears throat> maybe like 20 or something, he said to me, he's just like, I look up to you, man. I love your content so much. And I was just, I don't know, just him saying like, I look up to you. Like, I was just like, fuck, like. That's just, that's crazy that like now it's a well-known road to success making YouTube videos and shit. Like there's just a lot, kids understand that's an option for them. Yeah. They don't have to sell drugs. They don't have to fucking go to college or whatever. That That's an option for them. And just the fact that I did it early on and that like that kid could look at my story and like see it as a fucking blueprint for how he could make something out of himself I don't know. I mean, I have people say shit like that to me all the time, but like for some reason that one just, it just moved me. It's it's and look at, I bet you that was a fucking such a good ass fucking day for him. Like, yo, you know what I did today? I fucking met Adam Twitter. He told every fucking friend he had. Go, yeah, bro. I've, nah, he was cool as shit. Nah, man. I mean, I was at a funeral, but still, I guarantee you that shit's gonna live for him fucking forever. And that's how, what an impact you can make by just existing and doing mm. stuff you like. Right. That's why I did it for free <coughs> for so long. Like, I read the comments on my interview that you did, and 
it was interesting because there's <coughs> everybody has YouTube comments. A lot of my commenters are fucking assholes. No offense, guys. I love you guys, but you know they're just kind of talking shit, making fun of whatever they can in the comments and stuff. Yeah. And I love that. I love that, honestly. Like, the more negativity and sarcasm in the comments, <laughs> it's totally fine by me because that's like my personality, my style of humor. So I'm okay with that. But when I'm reading your comments, I'm like, wow, this is a very, very supportive, positive fan base. Like, they were really genuinely happy. Like, oh, you, you got the Adam interview. Like, this is a big one for you. They're like coaching you. Like, they're everybody, really happy bro. for you. That was, that was interesting. Like, 99.9% .9 of everybody. I can tell you how many people are rude in a month like on one hand right our fucking community is so strict because they do you remember being like 14 <clears throat> just sitting by yourself watching whatever movie you're watching you're like fuck man one day i'm gonna do some sick shit like that and now they can actually watch someone me say remember when i was like 14 saying man i'm gonna do some sick shit and they're like yo me too fuck yeah i can do it <laughs> you know it's it's yeah. like a oh shit it's possible right yeah especially the fat brown kids too I get that a lot. Like, yo, man, I'm fucking fat. I'm brown too. They see your, they see themselves in you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Or see like, they saw me like, yo, remember when you were? My rent was like six hundred bucks. I remember right. and it was struggling to get that shit. Right. I mean, you, you know, like if you're a kid and you like, you know, Bryce Hall or Tana or whatever, you know, these like good looking people. They're like, you know, I don't know who they are. Oh, you don't know. Who they are. Bryce Hall is like this super buff, like TikTok star dude. He's, he's the homie. We interviewed him and shit. But it's like you could understand how a kid who looks like you watching him on TikTok or whatever. It's like you, you just don't really see yourself in that. You think like, oh, this guy is famous because he's in fucking crazy good shape and he's mm -hmm. like Mr. Handsome Dude and shit like that. You know, with you, it's like the fact that you can make it off of just being like a cool dude who represents the person. type of dude that you are yeah. is like that probably just has inspired it resonates people, more know? yeah i always say i one of my first videos that started going viral i always say i said uh i'm you you are me we're just like in different parts of life right now because i remember looking up at people like my homie that disappeared yeah like the only teenager i knew that had like 250 band stash like mm. what did you just fucking say <laughs> you're so looking up i would drug look dealers. at that like oh you mother because he was super well your fans nice are basically cool. looking up to a drug dealer as well yeah <laughs> like the, all the old stories i get that <laughs> right. but my homie's like he was the fucking cool one he was the white kid that fucking freestyled hella good and everybody knew that shit we just he was just a cool motherfucker mm. so when he came up everybody's so happy for him you know what i'm saying so when i saw that i'm like dude there's nothing negative about this guy why wouldn't anything good happen <laughs> and my thing is like just try to be positive unless someone's being a piece of shit and then it's a whole different story right but it, it, the, the more positive you can be but like you said i love that sorry i do my fucking favorite shit is larry david i love just talking shit right but going out and hurting someone's feelings versus just fucking around is a different thing right so like when you're saying like your fan base is so positive it's just because that's like i preach that shit but do you block people who are negative and shit oh instantly oh okay. you go, hey man I'm, i don't have the time for it right yeah that and mo mainly it's like what are you going through right now? Mm. You're going through something right now. Sometimes right. I'll talk to them. Mm. I have a lot of people that talk shit to me, and at the end, they're like, all right, my bad. You're right. Because it's like, yo, if this I would say, if this is a movie, are you the bad guy? Are you Cobra Kai? And fucking, but why are you, you the good me? guy? Because I'm not being a piece of shit, and I was just <laughs> minding my own business. Right. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean? Unprovoked pieces of shit. I can't lie, though. Like Some of my favorite YouTubers are the ones who are just like talking shit. You know, the people who... Oh, I love shit talk. They got no skin in the game. They're just an anonymous motherfucker in Idaho or whatever. You know, they, they, they're not exposed in their face or sometimes they are, but they don't really, you know, they're not in a situation where they have to deal with the consequences because rap music, just to speak about my sort of niche, uh, you know, you got infinity people who will not say how they feel because they want to get an opportunity down the road. You know, like when I am honest about how I feel about Kanye and I say he is being an asshole and, you know, this is, this is fucked up. What he's doing right now is fucked up. I mean... I know that I'm kind of closing a door on potential things where if I were to yeah. just revere Kanye all the time and ignore the things that I think that he's doing are fucked up, that would be probably good for my career overall. So I love anyone on YouTube and shit who just has the balls to just shit on somebody, not to empower your haters or anything like that. If you, I don't know if you know, rightfully so. Yeah. I love that shit. I love people <laughs> yeah. talking shit when it's justified. Right. For sure. I love, like I said, Larry David, I love all that shit. I love sarcasm, but when it comes to like just being a nice person mm. in public, yeah, I'm not gonna be a piece of shit. You ever had somebody talk shit to a person? Fuck no. Never. Never. Uh -huh. I'm not enticing the shit, but where are all the motherfuckers that say you're gonna catch me somewhere? Mm. 
I'm not enticing it once again. I'm a very nice person. And that's <laughs> right. why I always get like, me? Me? I'm f- what? You're not worried about that? No. Okay. I don't do nothing. I, I've never burned nobody. You never ran sure. into beef throughout all this shit? You never had like a, a beef? Oh, I've had a lot of people just start being rude, yeah. On YouTube? Sure. You yeah. ever have like a, a good solid back and forth that the fans oh, are invested I, in? Oh, I have. I have where it's, but it's always like, at the end I go, what did I do? Why did I waste my time on this? Really? the fuck am I doing here? Do you stay away from it for the most part now? It, it's, it's more of like, <sighs> you didn't make me any money. You're not fucking my shit up. Why do I care about you being a dick? Right. Yeah, that's what it is. Do you have a Patreon? No, I tried it for like a month, and I went, this is too much to keep up with, and I'm out. Really? Yeah. But do your videos ever get taken down? Yeah. Feels like that's why it would be good for the hardcore fans to I be just, able to see the shit that YouTube r- removes. I have a dopeisyolo.com. I put everything up there. Okay. Yeah, that's... I just always felt weird, like, yo, remember that shit you saw for free? Give me a dollar. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I always felt weird, like, you already saw this. Right. Yeah, but I just don't have enough time to make more. People always ask, why did you do more Patreon shit? I just, I'm just busy. You just got rid of it? Yeah, I just shut it down. I was okay. over it, man. I was Patreon.com slash no jumper. And that's where you guys do what? We interview OnlyFans girls and porn stars. And oh, because you can do whatever you want. They get naked. They fucking eat each other out and shit. It's oh. crazy. Like Playboy TV. Remember that shit when we were kids? Well, My actually, homie had that channel. It was insane. It's it's kind of like that. but Wait, right here? It's uh, A lot of times on the couches. Okay, and cool. Shit, yeah. clean we had a girl gym. squirt on the ground on a towel. Okay, on a towel? All right, fuck with that. Yeah, she squirted on the ground. I was like, oh, damn, this one's over here on the casting no, I couch. Fil- I've, filmed, <laughs> I've filmed a lot of porn on those couches. Maybe not a lot, oh. but, you know. <laughs> no, we clean it all the time. <laughs> this fool's laid the fuck out of the couch. I mean, I'm talking about, like, you know, over a year ago, and it's been cleaned probably 100 times since then. You'll be all right. Don't You'll be worry. all right, man. You'll be all right. Your tracksuit's good. Well, that's cool, man. Fucking Patreon, you can do whatever you want. Well, but, it, you know, it's weird, too, because even on Patreon... On Patreon, we can show nudity. We can't show masturbation or sex. So then we also have OnlyFans.com slash No Jumper where we include the full. Smart. Now, usually nobody's like having sex or anything, but like for for example, Crip Mac ate like some like rice and chicken and cheese type dish out of this girl's ass. <coughs> where you're, where you're sitting, actually. That's disgusting. Right here. You got a weak stomach? No, I just, I just imagine someone eating food ass. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he poured the food all over <laughs> this girl's ass. I paid her three hundred dollars to do this. Oh, on her. That's fine. And then it took a while. That's fine. For her to clean her ass off after. Yeah, Yo, you're running a fucking wild ass show out here, man. I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I can't say it's a bad <laughs> idea. Yo, all you do is merge some other shit you can't show on this fucking platform. But then we also have, as long as I'm just doing an infomercial about what I have going on, we also have OnlyPlugTalk.com, which is, that's the one where we interview a different porn star every week, and then we have sex with them afterwards. Stop Me and my girl. That's our joint business. That's totally separate from No Jumper. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Hold on. Is it like a thing? Like, yo, you know, after we're going to bang, right? Oh, they know, yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. You ever remember I was like, man, sometimes I, I looked up to my home. He was like 250K. I just look up to that. Thank you. That's amazing. So uh That's fucking awesome. What's your boner game like? You out here fucking or you you've been in a relationship for a long time? Oh, me and my uh fiance have been together for ten years. Ten years. Yeah. And you're thirty two, so you twenty two. You got in a relationship at twenty two. I mean she likes girls and shit too, so it's fine. You guys get freaky. She like, I mean, we don't want to talk about it too much, but oh, yeah. Ho, 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 no, I'm, I'm not like, like upset or anything. Really? Yeah, she dated chicks before she dated me. Really? So I got very lucky. So how's that go? She just gets like a, a hunger. She's hungry like <laughs> she the wolf. Gets a hunger at a time. Honestly, dude. She's we, like, babe, it's been three months. What it is is we're both like, I don't know if you fuck with Seinfeld, but I do. We're very scary Seinfeld. Like, oh, this girl's cool. I'm like, yeah, maybe we should chill. Oh, this bitch is littered. <laughs> get this bitch away from me. Or so they'll pull some little thing. I'm like, yo, it's so insignificant. I look at her. She's like, all right, man. Me too. I, see, I was thinking that earlier. I was thinking, <laughs> no, me too. I was thinking, you seem like the type of dude that would fuck a bitch who litters. Hell no. No? 
be gone with that bullshit. <laughs> Hell no. Wow. Okay. I just there's I certain corrected. things I'm like, oh, why do you do that for? Really? <sighs> but that's what sucks when you are a civilian and you're uh, trying to like figure out threesomes with you and your girl is that then your girl will start being like way more picky than you are. But you don't want to totally like reveal to your girl that like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. I'll fuck anything. <laughs> so like you're trying not to like let on that like you will literally fuck anything that moves. Cause like my girl my girl's like so much more she she would be so much more picky when we were just doing that without filming it, you know? Or for oh, me without, oh, for okay, me, gotcha. I'd be like, let's go. She's down, let's do it. I think it's really funny you said that. Uh, it's pretty damn true. Just keeping it real, man. No, you know what I'm saying? Those are the realest shit I ever heard. And yes, it's true. I believe in equality. Yeah. I always feel like, hey, this girl's a bitch at all. I'll tell this girl to get the fuck out of here. Because it's mm. always a weird thing. Because it's like, hey, you're just someone's daughter. Remember that shit. <laughs> this, is, this is my fiance. Like, right. It's been, there's been situations where it's like, hey, man, this is not a relationship. What are you doing? Oh, where a girl started to get too touchy feely or like in love? Not to the max, but like where I got the vibe and she got the vibe. I'm like, oh. hmm. let's just not do this. We had that one time where there was this fucking Asian girl that we were banging, and the girl just like at one point started texting my girl like shit that she wouldn't say in front of me, like kind of like, oh, like you know, like. Me and you should hang out soon without Adam. Like, I would really like to, you know, she's trying to, like, really, like, take her from me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I didn't realize that. power move. Yeah, I know, really. She's, like, really confident. (laughs) She's very confident. I don't think it was going to work, but (laughs) props to her for trying. That's lit. She's down. Yeah, she's cool. She tried to take me out of the game. Yo, could you imagine? I don't even know if I'd be that sad. Fuck, man. I guess. Fuck. Kind of lit. Yeah, I'll say it's not that like it's not like you got dumped for real. Yeah, no. If it had worked, I'd probably be telling the story in a totally different way. I'd be bummed. Yeah, for sure. For a little bit. Right. So when, when did you decide to do the podcast? Twenty nineteen. I was doing all the the uh, story times, and at mm. the end of one of them, I was just spouting off high as fuck. I'm like, you know what? You guys sit here. I could do three hours of this shit. What if I did a podcast? Let me know in the comments. And everybody was like, yeah, let's do it. And Marty, um, my producer, you met. And have you been homies with him forever, or when did he come into the picture? Dude, 2019. Okay. He had been following me since 2013. Never hit me up like, yo, I film, I produce, because you know how many fucking people do that shit. Oh, yeah. You know how many times you get that DM? Oh, I produce, I do this. Like, okay, sick. But he's not here today. No, he never so, did so that. So he doesn't support you. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Marty's got the three kids and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like an actual human. He's a real dad. Okay. Yeah, he's a real, he's a good dad. But how did he get in touch with you? So, he, look, this is the reason I brought it up. Like, everybody produces, he's been following me for that long and never, like, hit me up to do shit until mm. he saw the video where I said, I would like to do a podcast. Right. 2019, he hit me up. And Marty's, like, the media manager for Rogan, uh, Theo Vaughn, and, like, a bunch of big comedians. Media he, manager? He, like, runs all their tours, lines all their shit up, runs their socials. Oh, uh, wow. So Marty does, he, like, um, Fighter and the Kid, Marty's the, he started all that with them. Oh, wow. Yeah, Marty's been in this shit for, like, a decade. My Brennan Schaub interview came out today. Oh, you were on there? No, I interviewed him. Oh, he was here? Yeah. Oh, good shit, yeah. He actually just stopped working with them, like, three months ago because we got too fucking busy, man. Oh, really? So I think he just does Rogan's and... You know, Ryan Sicklers and shit, and that's it. Wow. He dropped all because we started getting so busy. He goes, let's just run with our podcast, man. But, but he's, Marty doesn't have enough power to get you on Rogan? Oh, no, we talked to him about it. Yeah. Yeah, we talked to him about it. It might happen. We'll see. Interesting. I never want to, I always tell him, like, it's your, it's your employer. Let's not just go, hey, by the way, you know, mm. we should be on your. I'm like, yo, let's check out our shit. If you see it, you like it, hit us up. We hit up his, it's like a Drake feature. Yeah, it's like if you want it, we're here. Let us know. It's the podcast equivalent of a Drake feature. You just sort yeah, of get like, that like oof. supercharged like validity of like, oh, I'm on Rogan, so I could be on anywhere. It's like saying I'm, I went on Carson for a comedian. Right. It's like, yo, I went on Rogan, no matter what you do. Right. Yeah. But it's like for here, like, yo, I went on No Jumper. Like, oh, <laughs> shit. As, a, as an artist, that's a big fucking thing. I do have a lot of people come in where it's like very obvious, like the gravity of it. Like, oh, Fuck. my. Like, I actually made it. Like, this was a thing yeah. for me that I've been thinking about for a long time. Yeah, no, it's a big, it's a big thing, dude. So, yeah, Marty, he, me and him, was just, 
just chill. Like, yeah, if he hits us up, we're not going to force it. We'll hit him up every, what we do is like send him his analytics every couple, five months. <laughs> like, hey, man, we just, whatever you want to do, we'll be in Texas. Um, but anyway, he hit me up and says, hey, I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, let's start off with editing. And that's when my, my YouTube just started. Because <laughs> Marty is a fucking badass editor. And he edits all my crazy 120 macro fucking Apple commercial weed shit, basically. Okay. So I have a lot of reviews. If you're ever watching the reviews, they're so fucking high def. It's insane. And um, it's hard to watch things on your channel because I was watching on my TV last night and every single video I clicked was age restricted. So I couldn't watch it on my TV because it said you have to log in on your main account. And I, I, know, I was trying to bro. Google what the fuck that even it's means. so annoying, dude. It's fucking annoying. Almost 99% of my shit's age restricted. Wow. But, um, yeah, and like I said, it took a year to find that warehouse. Right. So we we're just planning this podcast, planning it out. And actually, the day your episode came out was our one year anniversary oh, of nice. the show. Yeah. So we've been doing it solidly every week for a year. Who felt like the biggest deals that you got on there? The people that you were just like, I cannot believe them, actually. Probably Steve-O was one of them, right? Steve-O was super cool. Yeah, he was, he was very, very awesome. He's a super cool guy. Um, I had Chong on my story time before. I saw that too, yeah. Yeah, I had him on my story time like a year or two ago. That was awesome. But having him on the show. Right. The only bad thing is his producer kept doing this. But behind was it, him but it was like over an hour right yeah he was he was gonna stay for fucking hours i've right. chilled with him before and every time he's like all right i guess we're gonna go was he smoking fuck yeah really bro he is fucking awesome okay he's just one of those people you gotta you gotta meet one time <laughs> he's like he's like an old fucking full of wisdom old smoking man he's just a cartoon I, character. I did this weird like mini interview with him back in the day this company was like will you do this like interview with tommy chong and like you know we're just gonna like edit it down and turn it into this like slick little four minute video and it actually went viral and got like three million views or some oh, shit. shit nice but he was like i don't know he was just fried Really? Like, he just was like so How long high ago? it was like uh i don't know probably like four years ago but i just remember like I was asking him questions and he was giving me like the most spaced out answers that I could ever imagine. And I was just like, holy fuck, this dude is on one. He's uh, got really I, bad cancer. Right. So it's probably, he was probably fucked. Cause I did meet him one time and he was, he was seemed a little out of it, but right. I think maybe cause like the, the medicines he was on or something. Really? Yeah. I okay. think that's what it probably was, man. Cause when I meet him, that motherfucker's on it. Really? Cracking. We always do 45 minutes before the camera rolls every really? time. The shit that we kind of cut out because he's from a different era. Don't you kind of hate that? I don't want to get him canceled and shit. Doing 45 minutes before the interview of just I talking. Do it so much, too. And I sometimes so I, I want to be sitting here when they get there. Like when it's somebody who's like a really good conversationalist, yeah. it's like just get in here. because. Or, and that's actually kind of why we have the vlogger. Uh, we have Trevor follow the guest in with the camera so we can sort of capture anything that happens on the way in, you know? Mm hmm. I totally agree, man. But Some people just have a fucking inner monologue going at all times that you can just catch on camera. Yeah, but with him, I think that might have been it because he was fucking great. We oh. talked for so damn long. He's a yeah. he's a cool dude, but honestly, I think just being in there for me is the biggest thing. Right. I think just being there and going, hey, this is the fucking show, uh -huh. and ha and knowing that all these people are just fucking waiting on it super stuck like i said everybody's positive i am hyped to be in the premiere every monday like i'm there typing back every fucking monday oh you premiere it all every time because it's live chat we're talking i'm like all right this next part get ready for this bullshit <laughs> you know how many I mean? live viewers you got while you're premiering it, it depends on who it is uh, um sure. we've had like eight ten thousand was the most nice you know on the on the on the on the channel but we gotta start premiering our shit dude do, do it, it just hop in we got steve yeah. to do it now he does it every time fuck and dude people you know like hype people are dm me thank you so much for fucking making him do this he DM, he hit me back today right it's making people's fucking days man just by going thank you for watching right thanks for being here like just it's just that much more that's dope yeah it's that much more interactive i feel so you are actually making money off the podcast because you're doing the podcast, ads yeah. and shit and then also that channel is monetized yes. i'm assuming it's Times, wow, the That's first nice. time ever YouTube ever get. I never got a plaque, so Marty made me a plaque. Right. And as he was making it at the store, they deleted my fucking YouTube. I told you at nine ninety five. Holy shit! And I got it back like a month later. Oh. God. But like, what are the odds? Like, look what I'm making. I'm like, I'm calling you because I got deleted right now. Oh like, my what god. What are the fucking odds? I remember his face just dropped. 
Oh, but yeah. Oh yeah. Back to that. That's how I met Marty. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> long ass rant. That's how right. I met him. He's like, "Yo, let's do a podcast. I can help." Right. Yeah, but um, like through the sponsor, like we got Miller Light. Finally, we're the. What the hell is that? How you got Miller Light sponsorship, bro? They asked us like, "Yo, you want to be our like our 2022 brand ambassadors?" I go, "Uh, what the fuck did you just say?" Right. Sign it. And I don't know. Our our ad guy's a monster. Right. And he got that. So we just got on a call with them a couple of days ago. And I told him basically, like, yo, I want to be plastered in Miller Lite. I want to be able to do these ad reads like uh, Wayne's World fucking Garth. Like, when people sell their soul and he's all fucking decked out in fucking brands. That's how I'm trying to be. That's how into Miller Lite you are. Well, f- for these motherfuckers paying us like this for only having to do <sighs> one ad read a month, right. I really want to come through for them. Yeah. Like, I want them to go, who the fuck did we sign? It's an impressive amount this? of money. I think it is. Nice. Yeah, it's like it's. It, I, I think it is. Right. Just for one, for twelve minutes of my life for one year. Right. That's part of being a YouTuber. Every time you watch somebody do a brand deal, you just think, how much do they get paid for this? And should I be <sighs> jealous or not? Like, you think is this like, or is this? <laughs> I think it's cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, we have a like Rogan's company on it, so we're thinking like, yo, we'll go on your show, we'll go vlog the on it. Fucking university. You're sponsored by On It. Yeah. Really? And I first Abby was like, I know a lot of you are saying, how is this fucking fat guy sponsored <laughs> by On It? And then uh, we started uh, trying to work out. Not enough I'm Alpha Brain. To... Yo, that you're not taking works. the Alpha Brain. It actually works. Are you taking Alpha Brain? It actually works. Yeah. Really? It works. They mm-hmm. have the little shots now. Those are more. Those are easier to fuck with. Right. But yeah, no. Um, that's the podcast, man. We we sit there and just. That's what we get to. Uh, Age tricks a lot because I I will sit there and talk about times I almost got killed or times I almost bullshit this or that. And right. I, just, I think that's why. But you never have that happen on the podcast. Yeah, it happens on the podcast. Oh, it a happens lot. on that like a all, lot. All December was everything age restricted. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's the whole awesome. month. Yeah. Yeah, it's some bullshit, man. Painful. Yeah, but I'm trying to ease back, not talk about so much fucked up shit within 10 minutes mm. just give it a little break oh what just jam pack all the bad shit at the end yeah I'll, t- I'll be explicit toward the end man that's what i'm trying to do like i'm trying to oh the teacher's not looking all right, all right. hey fuck you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> do something like <laughs> I don't know. it do be like that we're trying man. who's your dream guest adam sandler oh same that was my favorite so person legendary. ever I'm from like <sighs> 10 minutes away from where he's from in New that. Hampshire. So when you so said, I'm like, whoa, shit. He's, he's just like hometown the, hero. He, he was. He was like the local legend when we were kids because he's like with the, one of the only famous people, basically the only famous person is, that we could look at from where we were from. And one of the most famous people on the planet. Yeah. And in the 90s, 2000s. I mean, that's one of the people that just not, not was fucking awesome at all times. I would have never thought that I would be looking at Adam Sandler as such a legend at, when I'm almost 40 years old. You know, like most people kind of fall off at some point but he's just somehow managed to make more maintain money. this crazy level of relevance you know i think because he's fucking chill and everybody's like yo i yeah. want you to win like he just does Reeves. exactly what he wants you know like, yeah that feels awesome right whenever you you genuinely like good for you and i think that you had a good thing going right i think when your fan base is good shit right that's when you win mm. you know and i think you just got to be yourself and if you're fake nice People see through that shit. You can't hold that shit through a podcast. You mm-hmm. can't be fake nice every episode. Yeah. You have to genuinely be yourself, and that's how people fuck up, and they shouldn't have made a podcast. Podcast is weird because it is kind of like the ultimate litmus test. Like I was watching this little like mini documentary about Joe Rogan the other day, and they were just saying that. like Before Joe Rogan, where did you really see somebody just sitting down and having like a full in-depth conversation on camera where you actually felt like you got to know that person and while the, the person who made this little documentary thing they're editing in like screenshots of all these different interviews that i remember seeing rogan do throughout my life that were just like insanely in-depth and really like opened my mind a shit low because i was stuck in the bmx game for a long time. I started doing the website in 2006 and like up until like 2012, you know, I was basically only doing BMX shit and I was really, really like stuck in that world, you know, like didn't really see a way of, or, or didn't have my mind expanded enough to see like doing anything outside of that world. And it was honestly listening to people like Joe Rogan where I really started to like get a grasp on like what it would be like to do content with people outside of the bmx world because up to that point it was only bmx 
and then rappers. It was like, I, w- I would just listen to rap and ride BMX. And that was like the only two things in my life that I paid attention to. I think. So that's why I take it a little personal when everybody's trying to cancel my boy Joe Rogan. Even if I don't listen to his content all the time these days, yeah. he's just like me. the biggest influence on me I am content-wise. 90 years old in my, and, and inside. I don't fucking watch the news. I don't watch YouTube really? other than fights. And now there's no fights left. I used to watch World Star Fight Comp every fucking that's, Friday. That's, that's where all you're I at. watch, bro. That's all I watch. You don't watch anything except fight compilations. I watch Norm Macdonald <laughs> compilations a lot. Okay, nice. I watch fucking... I watch a lot of comedian shit, right. and that's it, man. So at what some point, I started to feel like I needed to get educated about like the outside world to be a better podcaster, you. you know? Uh, yo, I don't play online games. I just had mm-hmm. a Franklin from GTA, Sean Fontino, on the show, right? Okay. He's a, he's a real person. He's fucking awesome. I met him a long, long time ago. Right. I don't play online games. I didn't know GTA released another thing called Contracts. The Contract is a new expansion of GTA. Okay. And he brought it up, and I didn't know it. And he, in a like old gangster funny way, like shunned me, like motherfucker, really? you don't know my new shit. And I went, hey man, I gotta start fucking reading. Right. I gotta start, like you just said, you to be a better podcast. I gotta open up your brain. I think I do. Because mm. after that last week, I went, what am I doing here? Yeah, I kind of just like feel like it's my duty to try to get as educated about as many things as possible, so I can be kind of equipped if it ever comes up. So Joe Rogan shit, like, you know monkeys are very strong in their thyroid oh muscle. God. That motherfucker knows so See, much. See, that is one thing that is fucking weird for me so when I'm watching much. this shit is he will bring up a fact like that. And I'll be like, how did you remember that? Like, he doesn't why? get fucked up like this, I think. <sighs> yeah, he is a pussy when it comes to weed, I'm pretty sure. He smokes weed. He but does, he but I'm pretty sure. He, exactly, because I remember seeing him go on the, uh, the fucking hot box, but you're doing that this week, right? Yeah, the Thursday. I saw saw you tweeted that. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I saw him on that, and Joe Rogan was way too high, dude. Like, he was stuck. He did not look comfortable. And and that moment, because, like, when you're in that fucking hot box, that's, like, four fucking people smoking at the same time. So you're smoking, and then you're also breathing in B-Reels weed, and and they have fucking, like, basically, like, curtains over the the windows. So it's, like, you're getting stupid high. I remember watching that and just being like, bro, Rogan is fucked up i like, saw him talk about going on he was just saying yeah. i don't think i've been that high before no yeah and in, in that moment i was just like oh shit he's in a little too deep here mm-hmm. or the other time that i kind of thought that too was when i was watching one and he was talking to some rapper or something and the the rapper said something about like oh and like you know i had like 10 pounds of weeds and joe, joe was just like wow 10 pounds of weed what does that even look like and i was just like oh that's crazy that like is crazy. Joe, Joe Rogan might not have like been around like serious amounts of weed. He's just kind of because he's been a fucking famous, a famous actor guy, yeah. all these years, yeah. and he's kind of in his own bubble. That's kind of it's refreshing to me though, like yeah. everybody I know, but <laughs> it's a twenty pack, like it yeah, is a twenty exactly. pack. Good yeah. job, good enough fucking <laughs> eye. It's like yo, what is because like my like I said, my videographer is fucking Russian, right? And we were filming. This is we were filming the other day. I'm like, uh, wait a second, these game bangers are staring at me. I'm just waiting for them to stop staring at me, and then we'll film. He goes, do you want me to film them? I go, bro, put your fucking camera down. Mm. He was ready to start zooming in on these guys' faces, staring at us. Right. And there's the fucking barrier of like, wow. Right. You really don't know. So like hearing Rogan, like 10 pounds, like motherfucker, it's this 10 times. Yeah. About right there. Bah, 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 10. Yeah. But it's it's crazy because he's so famous that why would he know a 10 pack? Why I just like, he? I'm surprised that at some point in his life, he wasn't at some fucking grower's house that had 10 pounds out or okay. something, you know, you like, know doesn't that just seem like something That's that, true. that That's Joe true. Rogan would live through is like, he's probably had every fucking weed dispensary in California offer, like, come through, we'll give you all this weed, blah, blah, blah. Wouldn't you think that he would just at some point be around that? But I mean, or maybe he's such a good interviewer. He's like, I know what that is. What would that be? What would that look like? So for my audience at home, uh. explain, maybe he's like asking questions just to fucking entice a conversation because yeah he's got to see 10 pounds you're right but that's a weird that's like a thing with joe rogan like when i really pay attention to his interviewing style is that especially when he like is interviewing a comedian they start doing this like weird little thing where they just start like bouncing little like comedic ideas off each other back and forth it's like almost like they're trying to like they're trying to other. find a good joke. They're like trying to like find like <laughs> what improv what, on live. Yeah, like what is the funny thing that we're gonna do here? But it's kind of like they're just sort of bouncing the ball back and forth. And I'm just when I see that, I'm like, that is like some real comedian shit. And it's way different than the way that I interview. Because one thing I've realized about myself is that I tend to be super literal 
Like I just ask like a factual question. I say like, so what about this? Boom, bam, bow. Just like lay it out there. <laughs> and like sometimes I, I love that when I'm watching my shit. And I like. Yeah, you said oh, you boner game pretty tight. You said that earlier. <laughs> so yeah, you're pretty fucking direct. <laughs> no, you know what? You know what? I was actually impressed myself. I was watching that Brennan Schaub one. I just for some reason clicked on the clip that said uh, Brennan Schaub on Jake Paul calling out Dana White. And I just said, so what about Jake Paul calling out Dana White? What do you think about that? <laughs> like now, like I just said it in such a matter of fact way. But that is one of the things I've learned as a podcaster over the years. Is like, the truth if you got out. a question, you don't need to add any like extra fluff to the question. Just, just, just lay it out there. Yeah, but if you're not friends with them, that's a brave thing to do. Mm. So that's a, that's awesome that you can do that now. But it's also it's not really like a that brave because it's kind of like <laughs> it depends. I on know he does. I've yeah. seen motherfuckers walk yeah. out of here from questions you've asked before. I'm like, damn, only girls. Touchy. Though. Why only girls? It was only girls. That I saw. <laughs> but I've seen that. Like, whoa, what did, is it that big? Because I don't know anything. Right. So I'm like, what is that a bad thing to ask this girl? What mm. the fuck? So I don't really. You ever interviewed a girl? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like one? The, we've only, we have two. 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 Yeah, we've had like. It's more than one. 20, no, three. We had like 25, 30 guests probably. Right. So far. I um, remember when I, uh, like I had done like 100 interviews and somebody was like, dude, you interviewed like one girl. Like, you're a fucking sexist. And I was like, oh, shit. How about that? I didn't know that I had a fucking diversity requirement here. Yeah, I don't, it's never, <laughs> no, well, the first girl we interviewed was a Jessime Peluso. She's a comedian. Funny as fuck, the most vulgar person I've ever met in my life, and it was hilarious and funny as shit. And we had another comedian on where she was super. I, I knew I was up for some shit because I'm mad ignorant. Okay. I'm mad ignorant. I say stupid shit because I know. I like to say some ignorant shit to people to see if they're going to get offended. I go, I don't want to hang out with you. Mm. It's a little test. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. And this lady's very political. Like she has a political talk show and she's a comedian. And we did fine. I remember thinking, like, oh, was that too much? But did you feel like she was good? She was cool. You were she in, didn't shun me. You were in too deep. Like you didn't really know how to. No, like anything I could talk about. When I, I just, talk to people who are like really like politically intelligent, even though I do listen to a lot of like podcasts and watch, stay up in the news and shit like that, it still feels like that's when I'm kind of like, oh shit, I'm like a little bit out of my my depths here. Whereas I can, I could talk about rap all fucking day, you know. I kind of like it if I don't know what the fuck they're talking about because I ask a question. If you mm. can't explain that shit to me, do yeah. you even know what the fuck you're talking about? But that's also very relatable as a podcaster, as somebody who's just willing to ask questions because the truth is is that the average person probably also like watches the news and feels kind of confused. Like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't really understand this whole Afghanistan thing, you know? Yeah, for sure. I asked her straight up, like, so what the fuck does this mean? Can you, uh, like, because I'll ask. Fuck it. I asked Doc, Dr. Drew. We had Dr. Drew on. Saw that. <coughs> I was just asking them fucking questions. Like, I've never been to a doctor. Do I have herpes? <laughs> oh, shit. Some shit like that. Yeah, look, what, what is this? <laughs> Dude, only fans, dope as usual, maybe. <laughs> right. But nah, man. Like, <laughs> that's how I felt. Like, let me just ask. That's the only time I've ever been direct. Was asking Dr. Drew, like, so what about this shit? Really? Yeah, you show him, like, a boil on your leg or something? No, I was just asking him. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a therapist. I'm like, so... My childhood sucked dick. I'm not a weirdo. Okay. Am I just an anomaly? Because uh, I don't give a fuck that okay. my mom sucked. Right. You know, I don't give a fuck that right. I'm hungry. You kind of feel like you should give a fuck, like you're supposed no. to be traumatized by these things? I guess. And you don't feel that way? Fuck no. Hmm. I was raised like the cable guy. Like, yo, watch this shit. I'm like, oh, I will. Don't worry. Okay. I'll watch Happy Gilmore 60 times again. If you do enough therapy, they'll convince you that you, that you, that that you have, have trauma wrong, that you need right? to work on. Yeah. But you smoke too much weed. It's to make up for something. Aha! No, it's not that. That's definitely what they're going to go with. Right? Yeah. They'll be fine. Like, I don't know what it is, but I smoke a lot of weed. That's, that's definitely you know what, what you are? it was. You're like Tupac. You're the rose that grew from the concrete. <laughs> I'm down with that. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but Dr. Drew was super. I've never talked to anybody that had any type of education like that. So it was kind of refreshing to hear that shit you know what i'm saying yeah, you could level up as a human being through the podcast you know like when i look back on the kind of questions i asked one of my in my early interviews i'm like oh shit i knew way less yeah. about everything everything back then Dude, six I, years ago I'm jesus christ i don't educate i know a lot more now yeah i don't know shit i but just what you weed. do you just get people who are experts in things that you're Learn. interested in have them on the podcast and and because when you think about that that's what's dope about having a podcast is that if you wanted to talk to Dr. Drew for an hour, I mean, what's his hourly rate for fucking personal consultation? Okay. It's probably like thousands of dollars if he even does that. And 
when you have like a podcast with a platform, you can get somebody like him to talk to you and tell you all the shit that he knows, theoretically, because it's like an exchange. Like you're giving him a platform. You're like exposing him to more people, even though you kind of wonder if Dr. Drew really needs that at this point in his life. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's uh, he's crushing. Have you ever seen that man in person? No. He's fucking buff. I Is didn't he? know that. He's like... I wonder if he's on testosterone. Hugh Jackman. Like, what the? I didn't expect that. Maybe he's on some test. From older man, man. I was he's got the growth hormone. He, he knows about he, all this shit. He, he knows be. it's safe. He might. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows I asked how to about do COVID. It in like, way, yo, what's, what's up with the shot? What the fuck? Because I didn't know what's going on. I'm like, you sorry. vaccinated? That's what I, he asked me. Are you? You asking me right now? Yeah. No. God damn it. Why did we let him in here? No, I'm not. We should have kept him in a bubble. It's <laughs> a good movie. You ever seen Boy in the Plastic Bubble, John Travolta? No. Damn. We're zero for three here. Fuck. <laughs> One was Fern Gully. The sa- Fern Gully, though. Demolition Man. These are all movies I need to put on the list. They're all great. You know, Wesley Snipes versus fucking mm. Sylvester Stallone in the future. Right. Oh, yeah. And Taco Bell is the only restaurant left on earth. I watch like a couple movies every year. Oh, you don't watch movies and shit? Yeah, just not not much. Oh, see, that's my shit. I'm, I'm almost done Money Heist right now. I don't know what that is. Netflix. It's a Spanish show, like from Spain. It's pretty sick. Anyway. I gotta go eat half a sandwich before we do the No Jumper show, which we do every Tuesday at 6 p.m. if anybody wants to tune in. Yola. What's up? Nice talking to you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. No <coughs> doubt. I'm fucking high. How long have we been talking? Uh, an hour? hour? Hour and a half. <coughs> um, <laughs> okay, tell me where, tell the people where to go if they want to support you. Uh, just go to Dope is Yola on YouTube. Go to Dope as Usual podcast on YouTube or Spotify, Apple, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. The Adventures of Yola on YouTube. Other than that, dude, my Instagram gets deleted so much. My Snapchat, I don't know what's going to be alive by the time this comes out. So we'll YouTube's just say a that. safe bet for the most Let's part. Let's just say YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Or dopeasyola.com. It's the easiest thing you do. We new show every Monday at three o'clock. Mm. You should just have a section on your website that is just. Your social media. It is. We have one. So that they can tune in when it gets deleted. Okay. That's Every good. time. That's Every time, dude. So, because nice. if we just get played so much, I might as well. These motherfuckers. Yeah. We'll fucking find a way to get rich another way. <laughs> These haters. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you, man. Much love. Thank you for having me. No doubt. No Jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, OnlyFans, Instagram, all that shit. Like, comment, and subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.